Hi, I'm Helen from Made by Hem. I'm a crochet designer from the UK, and today we're going to work through an introduction to tapestry crochet together. Let's get started. Tapestry crochet patterns will usually be made up of two main elements. The first is the written instructions, like in all crochet patterns, and the second is usually a tapestry crochet chart. Each chart should be accompanied by details of what each square represents within that chart. So this is the free chart for my Be Kind motif. On this chart, each square represents one half treble crochet in UK terminology and one half double crochet in US terminology. For this project, the odd number rows are worked right to left. That's the right side of the work. And the even number rows are worked left to right. That will be the wrong side of the work. The colours on this chart represent the colours in the pattern. I'm using Paintbox Yarn Simply Aran to show you how to create the rainbow stripe effect that you can see on the chart. But you could equally just use two colours, one background colour and a contrasting colour for the lettering. Let me zoom out and show you what I mean. OK, so if you choose to follow along with the colours that I'm using, you'll need the following shades. Spearmint green, paper white for the lettering, bubblegum pink, pale lilac, mustard yellow, seafoam blue and blush pink. But this project is a great way to use up scraps. Equally, you can choose just to use two colours, like I mentioned before. This is an example of a motif that's been made up just using two colours. So this is paper white for the lettering and mustard yellow for the background. Um, what I would say is it's nice to use a nice strong contrast between the background colour um, and the lettering just so it stands out nice and bold. OK, let's get started. So to begin with, we need to work rows one and two, which are non-tapestry crochet rows. So there is no carriage yarn within these rows. These rows will be worked in half treble crochet or half double crochet in US terminology. And to work these rows, we'll be using yarn A, which for us is spearmint green, if you're following um, the colours on this chart. Um, so we will need to make a chain of 44 stitches plus one as our turning chain. So, like I said before, I'm using Paintbox Simply Aran, but you can use any weight of yarn um, with any hook size that's appropriate for that yarn. So I'm using a five millimeter hook and Paintbox Aran. If you need any more guidance on um, the chain stitch or how to make a half double or half treble crochet um, than I'm giving in this video, there are some great tutorials on the YouTube channel. Um, so feel free to go and check those out. OK, so here we go. We're going to attach the yarn onto the hook with a slip knot. And then we need to make our 44 chains. So we'll have the yarn and pull through. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we will keep going until we've got our 44 chains um, and then we will add an extra chain as the turning chain. So I'll meet you when you've got your 45 chains. So there we have our 44 chains plus one, so our 45 chains. And now we are going to do our first row of half treble crochet, half double crochet in US terminology. So we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into the second chain from the hook, which is this one here. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we'll yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook to create our first half treble crochet stitch. And again, yarn over insert our hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. So we have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And again, yarn over, insert our hook into the next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. 
yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we'll continue in this way all the way along this first row. So yarn over, insert a hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all loops. So we'll continue all the way along the row and I'll meet you at the end. So I just need to make my final stitch. So yarn over into the last chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops, okay? So that is our first row complete. Now to turn, we chain one and turn our work. That chain one does not count as a stitch. So on this second row, we need to work right into the base here. So we yarn over, insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we get a nice neat edge there. So we're going to do the same on this row. We're going to work in this first yarn colour, yarn A, all the way along the row. We're going to half treble crochet, half double crochet in UK term, US terminology, sorry, all the way along the row until we get to the end. I'll meet you there. So here we are at the end of row two. So we'll chain one and turn our work. Now, this next row, row three, is the first of our tapestry crochet rows. It's always a good idea to have a look across the row. In this pattern, um, we're only ever using two colours on a row, but in some tapestry crochet patterns, you'll use two or three or maybe four colours across the row. So it's always a good idea to know at the start of your row which colours you're likely to need. OK, so here we are, row three. So we know it's an, it's an odd row, so we're working from right to left across the page. So first of all, we need one, two, three, four, five, six stitches, six half treble crochet stitches in UK terminology and half double crochet stitches in US terminology in the same colour that we're already working in yarn A. Now, the only other colour we'll need in this row is yarn B, which is our white. So we'll have that here ready. So we're going to work the first of these six stitches. We're going to work the first five stitches. One, five. OK, so on the last stitch, before we need the next colour, we will yarn over, insert the hook and pull up a loop. But we won't do the final yarn over. Instead, we'll pick up our, we will release yarn A, our green, and we'll pick up the next colour, yarn B, the white, and we will hook it over the loop over the hook and we will pull through with that new colour so that we're ready to work the next set of stitches in our new colour. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches there in green and then we're ready to work our white stitches. So to work the next set of stitches, we need to release the tail. So if you put the tail to one side, if you want to, you can make it longer so it's easy to identify which is which. Then we will be working these next stitches over the top of yarn A. So we will hold yarn A against our work and ensure that we trap it inside the stitches when we're working our white stitches, our yarn B stitches. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yarn B stitches. OK, so with our new colour, we'll yarn over, insert the hook and ensure that the green yarn is on top of the stitches. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. So there is our green yarn inside the stitch. We'll do the same again, yarn over, insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Here we go again, the green yarn trapped inside the stitches. So that's two of our seven stitches. Three. Four. 
five, six, and on the final stitch, we're going to change color with the last yarn over again. We always change color with that last yarn over, even if you're working a different stitch. So if you're working um, UK double crochets, US single crochets, you would still change color with the, that last yarn over of the, the um, previous stitch um, in exactly the same way. So this is the last stitch we're working with the white. So we'll yarn over, insert the hook, pull up a loop, then we'll release the white and yarn over with the green and we'll pull through all three loops. So there are our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches made with yarn B, the white. And we're now ready to work our next stitches with the green. And in exactly the same way, then we will trap the white within the stitches until we need it again. So let's check our chart again. So now we need two stitches with the green. So we'll yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops, ensuring that we've trapped the white within the work. Then for our last stitch, our last green stitch, we'll yarn over, insert the hook, pull up a loop, We'll release the green and take the white, yarn over and pull through all three stitches. Okay, back to our chart then. We need three white stitches. So trap in the green within the work, yarn over, insert the hook and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We'll do that twice. And then on the third stitch, we yarn over and pull up a loop, insert our hook and pull up a loop. Then gen we gently, it's a good idea when you're changing color, if you gently pull the yarn that's been the non-active yarn, you can see the stitch tightening here. We don't want to make it tight, but what we want to do is to make sure that the yarn is not bagging out between the stitches, because sometimes it can get caught on either side of the work. Um, so if you gently pull it before changing colour, just to make sure that it's nice and tight. And then we we'll yarn over and pull through all three loops. OK, so here we go. Here's our pattern starting to emerge. So here we are with the bottom of the D. This is the start, the first leg of the N. So now we need three green stitches. Again, we're trapping our white. One two, and on the final stitch, we gently pull the white and then yarn over with it. We've released the green. So now we need the second leg of the N. So again, one. So I'm going to work my last four stitches of green. One, two, three, Four. Okay, so we're now ready to work row four from the chart. So row four is an even row, so it's worked from left to right. And we can see in row four that we only need two colours, the green and the white, which are the colours that we're already working. So we can go ahead and chain one and turn our work, ensuring that our yarns are nicely organised before we start. And then if we look at the chart, we can see that we need four green stitches before we start on our three white. So we'll be working into these first four stitches. One, two, three, four. And then our white yarn is here waiting for us. So we'll yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. So that's one, two, three and then on our fourth stitch we will drop the green before the last yarn over and attach the white. Now we like to make this nice and neat so we don't want to pull it too tight but we want it to look um, neat we don't want it to be too baggy. So now we'll be carrying the green so we've got 
three white stitches to work here over the top of the green. So we'll yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We'll do that one, two, and then on the third stitch, we'll release the white before the last yarn over, gently pull on the green, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we'll continue to follow the green and the white pattern all the way along to the end of the row. And when we get to the end of the row, I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how to change colour to move on to row five. OK, so here we are at the end of row four. Now, if you're working the same colours as me, then you will need to change colour, change background colour at the start of row five. And rows five to eight will be pink. Bubblegum pink is our background colour and we'll continue with white for the lettering. OK, now, just like with the tapestry crochet, I like to change colour with the last yarn over of the previous stitch. So in this case, it is the last yarn over of the row. So we will yarn over, insert our hook and pull up a loop and then we'll release the green and find our next colour, which is the bubblegum pink. Attach it over our hook and pull through all three loops on the hook. Then we're ready to work our next row. We can fasten off the green. So to work row five, we'll chain one and turn our work. I have my white yarn on one side and my pink yarn on the other to try and stop them becoming too tangled. OK, so at the start of row five, we will need four pink um, half treble crochets, half double crochets in US terminology. OK, so one, three. And then we won't complete the four, so we'll yarn over and insert our hook, pull up a loop, then we'll release the white and we need to hook on, uh, release the pink, sorry, and hook on the white. Now the white is left one stitch further over. So what we will do is we'll hook the white on like we would normally, make sure that's nice and neat, but you can see that it trails across at the back, so we want to cover that up. So with our next stitch in white, we will still be working over the top of the pink, but we, we're going to yarn over and insert our hook. But when we insert it, we want to make sure that it's hooked over that one, over the, that trailing white yarn on the back and pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all the loops. And that just helps keep it nice and neat on the back. So we've got tapestry crochet rows now, right up until row 13, and then we have a little break here. So if you carry on working your rows up to row 13 and I'll meet you there and we can carry on and do row number 14 together. So here we are at the end of row 13. Now on the chart, rows 14 and 15 are non-tapestry crochet rows. So that means we don't need to carry any non-active yarns within our work. So I like to, whenever there's non-active, um, non-tapestry crochet rows, I like to fasten off um, any colours that I'm not using. Um, so that's the white yarn that we have left on the wrong side of our work that would have been picked up again in the next row, but we don't need it. So I've snipped it off with enough length to weave in the ends and that can be weaved into these white stitches here to hide it um, when we finished our work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one like we would normally and turn my work and I will half treble crochet, half double crochet in US terms along the next row and the following row, ready to carry my yarn again in row 16. You can continue working the grid until you get to row 21. And I'm going to show you how to pick up the white yarn in row 21 because it's a little bit different. So I'll meet you at the start of row 21. Here we are at row 21. At the beginning of row 21, we have 13 pink stitches before we change to our white stitches. So I've already made 12 of my pink stitches. So on the 13th stitch, we'll be picking up the white yarn. But the white yarn in this instance, where we left it on the wrong side of our work is all the way over here and we need it here. So what we will do is we'll yarn over, 
insert our hook and pull up a loop. Then we'll release the pink and bring the white yarn across to complete the stitch. Now we don't want that to be too tight because we don't want it to pull our work. Okay, so we'll have this yarn tail stretching across here. So we'll make our stitch nice and neat and that needs to be taut but not tight. Then we will work just like we did before over the top, but we're also going, we're going to work over the top of the pink yarn, but we're also going to work over the top of this yarn here. Let me show you. So we'll yarn over, insert our hook into the next stitch, and we'll have that yarn that's stretched across the back as well as the pink trapped inside this stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the loops. There we go, it's inside, and again, yarn over, insert our hook, we've got this trailing yarn and we've got the pink yarn trapped inside that stitch. So you can continue working the chart now. When you reach row 27, rows 27 and 28, again, a non-tapestry crochet rows. So um, you can fasten off your white yarn when you've finished using it in row 26, and then you can work rows 27 and 28. Um, in the green um, using half treble crochet stitch or half double crochet um, in US terms and I'll meet you when you're finished. Here we are having just finished rows 27 and 28, the non-tapestry crochet rows. We will have fastened off the white um, when we finished using it in uh, row 26. Now I've decided to turn this um, motif into a wall hanging. So I'm attaching a dowel across the top. So I'm working an extra row. Now I've decided to work that row in UK double crochet, UK US single crochet, because I think it looks a bit neater. And I'm trapping the dowel as I work this final row. So I've held the dowel across my work and I'm creating the stitches over the top of it, similar to the way we would carry the yarn um, when we're tap using tapestry crochet technique. So let me show you what I mean. So we insert the hook and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops and that just traps the dowel in between those stitches. And again, insert the hook and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. So we just do that all the way along, working in every stitch to make it nice and neat. And the second version that I was making, the, um, the two colours, the mustard and the white, my daughter has already claimed this um, as a dolly blanket. So I've added some tassels to the corners and that's ready to go now. But you could make, you could, it could form part of a larger project. So it could form um, a square and a blanket um, or a, a small cushion. Um, let your creative juices flow. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thank you so much for watching. Leave us a comment below to let us know how you got on. I'd really love to see your Be Kind motif, so be sure to tag me on social media and I hope to see you all again soon.